So you bought a Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller to use with your Switch. Maybe you bought four of them. Did you know that you could use those NSO N64 controllers on a real N64? The Blue Retro Project allows you to connect up to four Bluetooth controllers to your N64. And if you bought those NSO N64 controllers, you can now have a wireless controller for your real N64 that looks just like the original. Now there are a couple of downsides, such as no memory pack support, and you have to solder, flash and configure them yourself, but if you're okay with all of those things, let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to put one together. First things first, let's talk about the parts that you're going to need to build your own Blue Retro adapter. The main component here is this ESP32, which is a system on a chip kind of like an Arduino. This is kind of the heart and soul to the Blue Retro. It allows you to connect your Bluetooth controllers and then connect this to your console. Speaking of connecting this to our console, we're going to need an N64 extension cable. We're going to be cutting this extension and soldering it onto our ESP32, but more on that later. And if you want to connect multiple Bluetooth controllers, you're going to need one extension per controller. You'll need a micro USB cable for flashing the firmware. You're also gonna need a soldering iron and some solder. And you might as well have some flux with you. I like to use this liquid flux. The last thing you're gonna need is some wire strippers. I have some thinner strippers over here and then thicker strippers to actually remove the sheath from outside of the N64 extension cable. But first things first, let's go ahead and flash the firmware to this ESP32. In order to flash the firmware onto the ESP32, we're going to need this flash download tools. And we're also gonna to need to download this firmware zip file from the Blue Retro GitHub. At the time I was making this video, the latest version is 1.1.1. And then just go ahead and extract them into their own folders. We're gonna start the flash download tool program. Select ESP32 from this dropdown and press okay. Go ahead and plug in the ESP32 using a micro USB cable to your computer. Now we're gonna to need to search for a few of the firmware files that we just downloaded, so click this box. And over in the firmware folder, in the bootloader folder, we're gonna select bootloader.bin. And then in the next line down, we're gonna do the same thing, except for we're gonna go into the partition table folder and select partition table.bin. And lastly, we're gonna go into the main folder here and select the n64 underscore spiffs.bin. And then we need to check these boxes over here so that we don't forget. But it's yelling at us that we need to fill in some numbers over here. So type in 0x, 1000, 0x, 8000, and 0x, 10,000. Uncheck this do not change bin. Select this baud rate. Change the COM port to, for me it's COM port 6. And now we can upload the firmware by pressing start. Now it's going to say sync here. We're going to actually need to press the right button on the ESP32. This is going to cause the ESP32 to actually connect to this program and start downloading. And that's all there is to flash in the firmware. With the ESP32 flashed, let's go ahead and put that aside for a second and bust out our N64 extension cable. And you're going to need to find the side of the extension cable that actually plugs into a console. So for me, it's this side here. And then you're gonna cut this extension cable as long as you like. I'm gonna leave mine maybe about a foot. And go ahead and put this other side away for one second. Now let's see what color wires we're dealing with inside of here. So I'm gonna take my larger wire strippers here. I'm gonna leave myself probably about two inches so basically we're removing the outside sheath and exposing those wires in the middle. So now you can see we have three different colored wires exposed. Now our job is to find out which of these three wires go to which points here on this plug. Now finding which wire here corresponds with which pin in the plug here is easy if you have a multimeter, except there's really no metal exposed here for you to use your multimeter on. So our way around that is to actually use the other end that does have some exposed pins. So go ahead and expose the wires on this end as well. And to make it extra easy, I'm gonna use my other pair of wire strippers to expose the wires on this end. Now we can use our multimeter's continuity mode to tell which of these wires goes to which of these pins. I'm also going to throw up a diagram on the screen that tells you what these pins are actually labeled as because we're going to be using that when we solder these wires to the ESP32. Using my multimeter on continuity mode, I've discovered that this red pin is for 3.3 volts, the green pin is for data, and the black pin is for ground. Now you won't be using this end so you can put it away now. That means that the wires on this end are the exact same. So red is 3.3 volts, green is data, and black is ground. It's important to note that you should actually use your multimeter to find out which signals are which wires for you, because I can't guarantee that the extension that you're gonna receive has the same colored wires in the same positions. Let's go ahead and tin each one of these wires by adding some solder to it. 
And now we need our ESP32. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna look very carefully on the top and the bottom edge here. We need to find a ground pin 3V3 or 3.3 volts, as well as pin 19 or P19. Now I already added some solder to those three pins here. And starting with P19, I'm gonna solder the data wire to that pin. So add a little bit of flux. And I'm gonna take my green or data wire and I'm gonna solder it to that pin 19. I'm going to repeat the same thing up here for ground and take my black wire and solder it to that ground pin. And last but not least, I'm going to solder my red wire to the 3.3 volts. And that's everything you're going to need if you only want to connect one Bluetooth controller. Let's go test this on our N64 before we talk about how to connect multiple controllers. Let's go ahead and test our adapter by plugging it into the first controller port. If we turn on our N64, and then we can press the sync button on our N64 controller. You can see that the controller was synced. And now we can play games with our NSO N64 controller. By default, the Blue Retro adapter does not enable rumble, so we're going to need to connect to our adapter using a Bluetooth 5 compatible computer. For me, that's just gonna be my phone. And for iPhones, I actually have to use a special web browser called BlueFi in order to access this Bluetooth API in order to connect to this adapter. But here in BlueFi, I can go to blueretro.io and then under the first link, Blue Retro Advanced Config, I'm gonna turn my N64 on, I'm gonna hit Connect Blue Retro, and then select Blue Retro from this list of devices. And then eventually you'll get to this screen here. I think what we want to change is this accessories right here under Output Config, select Rumble, and then at the very bottom hit Save. And I think we set the first controller to have Rumble. Like I said before, if you want to connect more than one controller, you're going to need one extension per extra controller. You're going to follow basically the same steps as we did before, cut the extension, take the outside sheath off, and then strip and tin these three wires here. All the ground and 3.3 wires are going to go to these same two points, but the data wire for controller two is going to go to pin five, the data wire for controller 3 is going to go to pin 26, and the data wire for controller 4 is going to go to pin 27. Then you can just plug all those extensions into your N64 in that same order, and then sync as many Bluetooth controllers as you want. Well, up to 4. If you're curious about input latency on those NSO N64 controllers, I'll take some high FPS footage with my iPhone, and I'll leave the milliseconds on the screen here so you can see how much delay there is from when I press a button to when the action actually happens on the screen. Also, I noticed an issue with both my Ultra HDMI modded N64 as well as my N64 digital modded N64, where if you have the HDMI cable connected while you're trying to sync up a controller, sometimes the controller doesn't sync. If you disconnect the HDMI cable while the console is on and while the controller is syncing, then the controller should sync to the adapter. And then you can just plug in your HDMI cable again. I'm not sure if there's going to be a workaround for this issue, but I've reached out to Darth Cloud, who is the creator of the Blue Retro project, and I let him know this problem. If this video helped you set up a Blue Retro adapter, then give it a like, and get subscribed so you don't miss any of my latest console mod tutorials. I'll see you in the next video.